Now, O oh prince, that between the years when the oceans drank Atlantis and the gleaming cities, and the years of the rise of the sons of Arias, there was an age undreamt of, when shining kingdoms lay spread across the world like blue mantles beneath the stars. Nemedia, Ophir, Britunia, Hyperborea, Zamora with its dark-haired women and towers of spider-haunted mysteries. Zingara with its chivalry cut that border on the pastoral lands of Shem. Stygia with its shadow-guarded tombs. Hyrcania, whose riders wore steel and silk and gold. But the proudest kingdom of the world was Aquilonia, reigning supreme in the dreaming west. Hello everyone and welcome to Age of Conan Unchained and the Mequanlat with me, Mequanla Paola. Back in 2008, everybody was looking at 2004 World of Warcraft and going, holy shit, look at that game making all the money. How can we get some of that money? And at that point, which is why I call those years the Golden Age of Mumorpagas, the idea was to actually do something better or different enough that you won't directly compete with the biggest game out there. These days, and uh, starting in 2010, 12, people gave up and went, you know what, fuck that, we're gonna get, we're gonna make World of Warcraft clones and, you know, make them free to play. And that's what happened. But back in the day, in 2008, there was a different idea. Specifically, how about we do something different, bigger, better? And that's what they went with. But they were also somewhat lazy about it, most of them. So, rather than making their own world and doing stuff with it, they decided to, uh, well, take pre existing worlds and make more more quests out of them. So in those years we had Age of Conan, inspired by obviously Conan the Barbarian and the Nemedian Chronicles. The comics, not the movies. The movies were inspired by Conan, but the Conan in the movies is not the same as the Conan in the uh, comics. Which, by the way, I recommend if you can find them, the Conan uh, comic books are really fun. In a gory, childish kind of way, but not as not that much, they're pretty serious some of the time. Uh, the other games of the Golden Age of Morpagers were uh, obviously Lord of the Rings Online, also based in Tolkien. Thank you for lagging game there, I didn't. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, yep. Why are my frames dropping? Uh, <laughs> uh, we're gonna get to that, I think. Uh, can I? I'm lost. Give me a moment here. Let's go. Let's go. Blop, blop, blop. And a Warhammer game. Warhammer game failed. I think it was shut down in 2014, 15, something like that. So that's gone now. It was funny-ish, but it was the most clo wow like of the uh, Triumvirate. Dun uh, Dungeons and Dragons. God damn it. Uh, sorry. Lord of the Rings Online also went sort of tits up and then they said, you know what, fuck this, we're gonna go free to play. And they did so successfully. Where's the gate? That's not the gate. I think I missed the place. I'm sorry, I haven't been in Cimmeria in a long, long time. Can I? Oh. The game is kinda old now, in case you haven't heard it. And, uh, successfully, a uh, lot of. Lord of the Rings Online successfully went free to play. Now, Age of Conan decided the way it, it was gonna fight World of Warcraft and be as successful as it was A, use the really brutal world of Conan as a staging, as a playground. And I do have to warn everyone the, the world of Conan, the world of uh, Age of Conan Unchained, is really brutal. No, seriously, there's violence, and there's sex, and there's violence and sex, and there's sex and violence, and there's blast, decapitation, and I'm fucking lost. So, this game is not for you, this video may, will, this video will contain content inappropriate for the, for children. 
User discretion is advised. It will also contain mature themes. It will also contain really disturbing images. Be prepared. Also, the will also it will also 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 contain me repeating myself and getting lost. That looks like a gate. Is that a gate? It's a cat. It's a gate. Uh, no. Oh, I can't remember now. Go away. No, I guess I do want to go there. Some things have changed. So, I don't know why I'm going to a normal place, but I'm going The, uh... The way Conan was gonna beat World of Warcraft was to... As it. Be placed in uh, Hyperborea, I think is the one. A really brutal place. Have uh, an incredibly advanced and complex combat system involving combos and directional attacks. It's pretty neat, but it only applies to melee. And uh, have realistic sort of graphics. The best graphics PCs of the time could uh, um, show. Unfortunately, um, that was one of the big problems the game actually had. The, uh, the graphics created some really stiff... Oh god, I forgot. Some really stiff PC requirements. Oh, thank you for that. <laughs> and um, not a lot of computers could actually do it. In fact, the majority of players couldn't play the game. It was so uh, intensive under it. It took me five years. No, not five years. Well, five years to have a PC that can run this on high and two years to actually run it at low. So yeah, the uh, PC requirements are pretty steep, and you saw there are a bunch of frame drops. I think is the recording program, not the game, but I could be wrong. And the other problem, besides the lack of PCs that could run it, meaning just fewer players overall, was that at release the game did not have end game content, and people really took that to heart and refused to uh, play it. And of course it was pay to play. Monte suspicion for a game you couldn't run properly with no end game content didn't appeal to a lot of people who basically assumed and correctly did so that World of Warcraft was gonna be better and have staying power. Which this game still has. A couple years later, they half-heartedly did uh, transfer to free-to-play model. It kind of was limited, it wasn't that great, but it was something that let you play on for free with a handful of classes. Not all the classes were available, you had to still pay a month of subscription to unlock some of them, you still had to... Uh... Damn it. You still had to uh, pay up if you wanted to have everything unlocked. So you were limited in the uh, higher level quest you could do, you were limited in the class you could start as. But hey, it was free to play, and at the time there weren't that many free to plays anyway. But still, even then, you still had massive problems getting the game to run. Hello, loot! Thank you. <laughs> Which I do believe was one of the biggest problems of the game. Now, that said, a couple years later, well, at least in 2016, the game, while losing players, is still up. At least it has at least two servers one PvE and one PvP. I'm not gonna be on PvP because, well, haven't played the game in ages and there's probably people with giant axes about to kill me there. <laughs> so. There's still people playing it, and it's fun, and I really, really think the combat is a excellent. Unfortunately, the graphics are a bit dated. <laughs> so, 
the biggest part of the game for me was obviously the combat and, and the violence. I, I I was a bit young, <laughs> but yeah, the combat works on a uh, combo, but only for melee classes. Classes that use melee weapons will have to do combo to do extra damage, consider enemy defenses, and so on and so forth. What is that? So, for example, in order to do the most damage, I have three directions. I have top attack, you can see here, one, two, and three, I believe, no, it does not use the noom log, but you can rebind it, so, you have upper left attack, upper right attack, and overhead attack. It also, they also different depending on the weapons you have, so many, I remember how to do it, so, different animation. The quality of the combat is really good. And then in order to do advanced combos, advanced skills, you have to perform combos. So, Brutal Energy Strikes number 3 only works with two-handed weapons and a bit of that. It costs me Stamina, which is the yellow bar, the, oh, the green bar. So that depletes as I do attacks or skills, so you can't over them. And they do 30 damage per second, and combo finisher it does extra damage. I have another here that uh, inflicts damage. Inflicts damage. Inflicts damage. <laughs> they do extra damage uh, on my character, on my class. But in order to perform the successful, you have to do combo. So you press the skill, which attacks. And then you have to do a left attack, and then a right attack, and boom, brutal strikes. So, it's pretty interesting, and it's uh, fun and engaging. Let me catch you up. Unfortunately, it also means that if you fuck up, like I just did, you're not gonna do damage. Even worse, if you just wanna play this... Ow! And you're not dead. If you just wanna mindlessly grind, you can't do that. If you don't press the arrow, you will not attack. There is no auto attack in the game. You also saw above the enemies some arrows. Um, those represent where the enemies are focusing the defense. I can't remember exactly how to do it, but see here. So if I do a top attack on him, I'm gonna do full damage. If I hit him from the left, he has two shields over there, so he's gonna block most of my damage. Maximum is three shields on each side. You have three shields you can deploy either way. He has two on the right, one on the two on the left, one on the right. So the best attack I could do is hit him on the head. And as you can see here. For two damage. <laughs> if I hit him on the right, still two damage. Oh wait, I think I disabled flowing numbers. But you, you guess the idea. So you have to keep in mind where the enemy is, is defending. We, in the game, the game calls them shield, but that's basically how you like, saw mine there popping up. That's how uh, the enemy is focusing his defense. It's really, it's easy for him to defend on the left. It's e harder to defend uh, with a top attack. Assuming I can hit it. You also need to uh, consider deployments. And I wish I could remember how to do mine, but we're gonna do that when I start the new character. This is just to get you, give you your appetite, form you uh, the appetite for the game. I'm way over level for this game, and people have horses. There's still people playing. Imagine that. But yes, the combat I found the most enjoyable is really, really fun as a melee character. Although it depends on the class. I'm playing as the Conqueror, which you couldn't play in the original. Uh, Free to play version. You only had uh, a guardian, I believe, a rogue, a hunter, maybe, and uh, the priest and the mage class. Out, so you had kind of like four classes out of nine or something like that. Die, badger! Also, welcome to Cimeria. Cimeria or is it Cimeria? I think it's Cimeria, although, eh, who gives a shit? We'll consider naming uh, nomenclature later. For uh, people playing this at the time, this was our Skyrim. Snows, mountains, rivers, <laughs> Nords. 
really fun. There have been updates for the game, improvements... It has everything you expect from RPG, but if you want to be lazy, don't play a uh, melee class. You can be a magician, they use the same standard press button stuff, dies! From other magicians, so I never found them that interesting. And, uh, well, the Conqueror is one of the most fun and enjoyable classes to play. Ah! Yes, I am swinging wildly, I don't know. I oh, you can also block. Yes, it uses stamina, but you can actively block and take less damage. Fun, isn't it? So, there's skill involved in the melee combat besides what gear I have and what skills I use in what order. It's still a big part and you have passives and shit like that, but again, I'll do this when I start a new class so I can remember them anyway. Because I've forgotten so many things and I wasn't really that good. Oh, by the way, brutality! I wasn't really that good to begin out. Oh, people! Yes, as you can see, there's still players. Uh, good times. Although, I think... I need to lower my contrast a bit. Maybe. Or my brightness. Hey! I wanna... I wanna kill some of those because they do have different animation. So the plan is I'm gonna start a new character soon and probably in the next video we're just gonna do all of the quests all over again because I can't remember shit and I wanna do it in the vein of... Uh, there we go, no. I thought he would die at the time. <sighs> Why is Cimeria so fucking bright all of a sudden? I remember it being this way, but then again, it's close to sun. Gamma? I think Gamma might be... Uh... Yeah, this looks better, doesn't it? Yes, I think. <laughs> there might there might be a, a problem when you don't actually see it. Come on! Let me hit you. Ah! Let's see what I say. There's no auto attack, so... This guy can hit me, and if I just go from the computer, my game is not going to attack automatically. You need to do it. But yeah, I'm gonna start a new character, probably another Conqueror, because it is the most enjoyable to play. Eh, combat kind of feels dated a bit these days. Not that the, the combo thingy, the fighting itself isn't fun, but because of Momorpagar, you don't get that impact you get from a single player game, for example. Mountain Blade or Shivery Medieval Combat. Die! <laughs> And yes, we have the general chat with people selling purple shit. Weave breaker. Oh, how do I? Oh, 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 oh. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, how do I do that? Uh, one, two, three. Oh, one, 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 two. Okay, so the way I activate my defense is apparently four, three, two. Kind of. Uh, I think I found my shields. Two, 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 two. Wait, so double. None of the controls now. Give me one. Not that one. <laughs> Control one, two, three. Changes the shields, but um. I can't. There we go. It's complicated, and it was never good at it. I mean, really. You really expect me to be good at it? Oh, come on! Let's, let me combo him! Damn it! Give me a dead animation! I need to... Not defensive, let's go fucking frenzy. And... Blah, 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 blah. Similar damage. Armor protection, melee damage. Eh. Critical rating, let's go with that. It changes the stance, I believe, as well using different stances and skills. Well, he's dead. They're all dead. I'm level 30-ish something. What level am I? I have 20 flare skills. I don't think these guys even play. Oh, that's the uh, info. Shield location, heat unprotected. Area, struggle combat. Oh, that's the button I was looking for. What button is this? Oh, attack left, straight, attack right. Inventory, character, combat, squirrel, open, run, 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 run. Well, you can see this. Yay! 
Um, somebody was recommending when I was looking what class is still best for solo to... Oh, you can also hit multiple targets, because why the hell would you not? With a massive fucking axe. So, yes. That's really satisfying. I can't stress this enough. It was satisfying back in the day. It's not so much these days when uh, you have games like Mountain Blade and uh, Shivery Medieval Combat, but still better than Skyrim and shit like that. It's tactical. It's smart. Ah, oh, damn it. Hit him on the head. And if you know what you're doing, you see this one goes up, this one goes light. If you know, if you learn your combos and look at the shield, you might think, yeah, I could activate this combo just for the extra damage. But if I use the other combo, it's gonna hit them in a different way and hit him when he's not, where he's not guarding. As you can see here, this guy, there we go. Right, so positioning is a bit of an issue, but <laughs> it's still fun. So you saw that he had he focused all of his defenses on a top attack, and my combo basically went right attack and left attack, and then a finisher to finish the combo. So he didn't block any of that, which is nice. Anyway, now you see why I like this game. So uh, I will do a let's play of the quest. That's what I want to do. I'm not going to do uh, what I'm uh, heavy guild stuff, dungeoning. God damn it, hit him. Not going to do end level stuff, dungeons, if I can help it. I'm probably going to grind. I'm going to do solo stuff and do the quest. Basically do a story play of the game like I did with um, Star Trek Online. Just do the missions, do the quests as they come, and try to avoid... Damn it. Stop losing frames, game. Try to avoid really quests that in require uh, a, uh, a party. Yay! Victory. Anyway, that's the plan. So let's do it now. I'm gonna start a new character. I'm gonna talk about the other classes and, uh, well, hopefully show you an intro. <laughs> if not, next time. One thing to know, this game doesn't really like to start and stop. It takes quite a long time. Sorry. Whenever you try to log out, you have to wait 50 seconds. If you press exit before that happens, you quit the game entirely and then you have to boot it up again and the launch has to start. I mean, the launch has has to verify the game caches, which I, I understand the reason for that. It's annoying when it takes 2-3 uh, minutes to get back into the game. Anyway, so I'm gonna play on Chrome PvE, because I don't want to PvP. That's my main and only character, the Cimmerian Conqueror, level 34, Ruavel. And uh, I'm gonna take a look at the classes. We're gonna do on Chrome anyway, because... I'm not good enough to PvP, especially when there's been uh, eight years since the game was launched. So there's there's people out there who have played this game for eight years, and they're probably PvP. So no, thank you. Anyway, this is the beginning. We are either a male rower slave on this galley or a female slave. Not rower, but, well, I don't think it's better if we're female either. For a woman on this boat. You have four cultures. Aquilonian! Think of them as the Roman Empire of the world, because it's basically it. By the way, King Conan of Conan the Barbarian fame is the Aquilonian king. It's a long story, read the comics, but he is the queen of Aquilonia, which follows a more or less Roman Empire team. It has tower shields, it has legions, stuff like that. The Cimmerians are basically Celts or Germans in ancient Roman times. A combination of both. 
basically somewhat barbarians, but good fighters, and they worship Kram, who kind of doesn't give a shit about them. Um, you can pause and read the description here, I'm not gonna bother because we're kind of running on a schedule. The Stygians are the assholes of the world. No, really, they um, ancient Egypt, more or less, with a lot of uh, snake worshipping and poison and death cults. And Kitan, or Kitai is actually the world, but I don't have the expansion. I don't think I, I think you still need to buy this one, even though it's free to play. Or maybe just unlock it somehow. I haven't. I could. But I can't bother. Can't be bothered. So, this is the differences. Blah, blah, blah. Think of Kitai as mostly Japan, but with a bit of China in between. There's a catch to this. Depending on your cultures, you have limits to what class you can be. For example, while most people can be Guardian Dark Templars, some of them can't be conquerors, like the Kitai people. They also can't be Priest of Mirda, they can't be Tempest of Set, they can't be Barbarians, civilized bastards that they are. They can be demo Demonologists, Herald of Zoti and Necromancers. Stygians can't be any of the soldier classes, because they're pussies who will backstab you at the, the first chance they get and poison you when they can't. But they're all really great magicians and well, ranger assassin. These are the people you wish they would be in the front line but aren't and are probably trying to backstab. Cimmerians and Aquarians. The only difference is Cimmerians are kinda honorable so they don't have assassins and obviously no mage classes. And Aquilonian, no magic classes as well, they can be assassins, they have priests, while the Cimmerians have bear shamans. Kinda the same, but with giant clubs and medium armor as opposed to cloth and uh, the holy symbol of Mitra. Let's talk about the classes. Guardians! The basic tank of the game, not really a fan for solo play since their damage is kinda lacking. Dark Templar, basically buffed up tanks so later levels if you build them properly and you gear them properly they can do some pretty much damage they are fearsome warriors that will utilize dark magic to inflict pain and drain the life of the enemies so they have sustain they can do damage with it and it's a melee class that can also use full plate and well one handed weapons i guess and shields so it's sort of a close quarters a paladin an evil paladin. Think of it as an evil paladin and that's what you have. Conqueror is... well... Firstly, it's a... Uh, an homage to Conan the Barbarian and later the Conqueror. They're basically... Aggressive warriors. They can do a bit of everything but they have great solo damage and they have full plate and they can carry can't actually carry shield. So they can't tank as good as a uh, guardian, but they're in between, you know, they're, they're the solo soldier class. They're not uh, formation fighters. They're, you know, the guy that grows in the middle and swings a bunch of axes around and still has a full plate, because why not? They're the easiest to play in my opinion and the most fun, so I'm probably gonna be a conqueror, but there's still uh, a bunch of classes. All of the melee classes, the soldier classes, are melee classes, so they use the melee combat system. The priest classes, well, Priest of Mirta, standard priest in every game. Oh, by the gods, healy, 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 light armor, cloth armor, and shields. Not really fun, and they don't have any, well, they kind of have melee combat, but if you get into melee, not fun. Besides, solo, they're really hard to play, even though they can heal themselves. By the time you actually heal yourself, you've taken so much damage, it doesn't even matter. So, not recommended for a solo player. Tempest of... Fucking Stygians. <laughs> Tempest of Set. Evil Priest. <laughs> Will also destructive might of the Set. The ancient snake god of Stygia, who rewards his disciples with devastating spells. Like other priests, Tempest have the power to heal and mass and restore life. So basically the Stygian priest that could also do more damage to enemies. And they can use pole arms for some god knows reason. 
again, I believe they're the same, never tried it, because A, I'm not really a fan of Stygia, and B, um, I play Age of Conan for the melee combat, not the press a button, watch the animation happen, and then see people dead. Gameplay. So, mm. And of course, yes, I am showing you all the females so I can <laughs> gather views. The bear shamans are strong like their totem animals, they friendly have to know us. The bear crushing enemy skull with their massive hammers while augmenting healing and eventually resurrecting the So I, I believe they're weaker on the heal but better on the boss. While the priests of Mitra are the best at healing while the tempest of all the priests do the most damage. They also can carry medium armor because shamans, bear shamans, and two-handed blunt weapons. Yes, no shields. So, think of it now as, well, as a shaman, obviously. <laughs> Again, it's a mostly a casting class, not a fan of it. But we do have down here at the rogue class. It's a bit of a misnomer. All of the classes can actually hide and go still, but the rogue class does the best, does it better than everyone else. The barbarians, which maybe is what Conan is, I believe Conan is actually a conqueror in my opinion, but they use light armor, they use cloth armor, and they use giant swords and they can't use shields they're uh, really good at doing damage not so much at surviving but they can be maybe more fun than the conqueror because they're a bit harder to play since they don't, can't rely on their uh, heavy armor I'm, I'm tempted to play as one but I really like armor <laughs> I, I like buff beefy armor, and I do want to have look like a fucking Roman legionnaire with a con- I uh, can't because I don't have a shield. Hmm. Well, as a almost Roman legionnaire. <laughs> but yeah, maybe a barbarian might be fun, but the lack of armor and just light armor and cloth. Bear skins and wolf skins, not for me. I like my armor, like chain mail and plate mail, so maybe not, but they're still fun to play. You obviously have the... Uh, the assassins or Kitai or Aquilonian, let's be honest, it could also be an Aquilonian. Which, which a lot of people actually say they're boring, so they only have a couple of combos and skills. By the way, the game does have a night and day cycle, with the exception of the tutorial island. So, in the tutorial, the classes that rely on stealth the most are gonna be, are gonna have the hardest time since. The missions with other are gonna be decidedly daylight missions or nightlight missions. And you can't change it. You can't go like in the story mission, go in a wait until night and then sneak around and backstab people. Eh, people say the assassins are not fun. Silk armor, cloth armor, silk armor, really? Can't use shields, daggers, and crossbows only. They're really limited. But maybe they could be fun. Never tried them, really. Can't remember. And uh, yeah, in the tutorial, they really got fucked by the lack of a day night cycle. At least when there was a tutorial area. I believe nowadays they start you in a faction, in a culture specific place. Next, the Ranger, Balling Crossbow Specialist. Ooh, it's a Ranger. Has medium armor though, which is nice. Better than the Barbarian. Use one handed weapons and daggers and bows. They can kind of dual wield, but only with a dagger in their offhand. They're, they're alright. The problem is, melee enemies will just rush forward, and you won't have that many shots unless you want to kite. And uh, you really want to kite? Again, it's a bow. It's not. You can melee it up and use the combo system, but it's, your primary weapon is going to be a bow. So, you, again, you click and watch an animation. Not for me. And obviously we have the mage class, which as you can see, with some exception, usually before the Kitai expansion only Stygians could be mages, but Kitai can do it now anyway. Which kinda basically means nobody plays Tigia, I guess. You have Demontologies, they summon demons, they also mage, cast stuff, silk armor, cloth armor, they summon demons. And on the, uh, actually no, that's the necromancer. I believe the difference is a demontologist can su summon 
powerful demons. While a necromancer can summon several undead. Or it could be the other way. I can't really remember, but the difference between a demontologist and a necromancer is that one class can summon bigger, better enemies, while the other can summon more of them. Basically. So it's up to you which way you want to summon. Rotting undeads or horrible monstrosities from the other world. And of course the Herald of Zot... Zotli? This one's a bit different. It's... Well, basically it's the Stygian uh, Barbarian. <laughs> With a twist. It... It's a uh, no-armor fighter that uses two-handed dagger edge weapons and daggers and crossbows and shit like that with limited armor but as you can read here it uses magic to transform the safe into a fiery demon so they transform into demons and that buffs them up for a period of time pretty interesting if you're into that sort of thing but when i tried it i really did not find them enjoyable because i kept forgetting to turn into a demon and it was tedious, oh, before I start the fight I have to press this button and turn into a demon and then I have to finish the battle before the cooldown expires and blah blah blah. Yeah, why? Why would I do that? Anyway, those are the classes. I think I'm gonna go with the Conqueror again, but, well, I have to. I think I'm gonna go with the Nakulonian though. If I remember correctly, a couple of years ago they changed the starting island from Tortuga, which is, well, you know what Tortuga is, right? The Las Vegas of fantasy and medieval worlds and pirate worlds. Yeah. They maybe changed it from the starting engine. The problem is, Aquilonia is the least interesting nation ever. It's basically Italy. <laughs> so, you know, vines, hills, stuff like that. Sumeria has mountains, Stygia has deserts, and Kitai is Japan. Of China. Haven't seen it yet, but Aquilonia is the least interesting of them all. And besides, Conan the Cimmerian. Everybody wants to be a Cimmerian. Oh, by the way, Cimmerian destroys the supernatural can and never become sorcerers. There you go. Cimmerian can never become blah blah blah. blah. Anyway, right, I'll be back once I made my character. I usually go female because. Butts. <laughs> oh, by the way. I'm gonna love this one. Um, is that an advance? I yeah, imagine it. I'm pretty sure. There it is. <laughs> yep. Yes. Yes, there's a button for titties. <laughs> I'll be back once I start my character. If I'm gonna do a conquer, though, I might. Might make a male one because I already have a female conqueror. I'm th I'll think about it. By the way, in case you haven't figured it out, the game has an amazing soundtrack and if you're into that sort of thing, I recommend you download it manually someplace else. It's really great and not just... Um, it's in your head. It's weird. And not just uh, dependent on playing the game. It's, Really, one of the best soundtracks of a game I've ever heard, and it's following the step of War of World of Warcraft, World of Warcraft, which also had a great soundtrack. Anyway, be right back. But before I do that, <laughs> kind of decided on it. Let me show a bunch of the customization options. Cool. <laughs> Five voice sets, thin, muscular, bag, or fat. Mm. It's up to you. Height can be a really small people or a very tall one. Skin colors. You have body markings. There's a lot of them. Although, since you wear armor, not sure how many will see them. There's also that. You have eh, some faces. Eye colors. Hairstyles. <laughs> no. It's... maybe. Hair colors, no markings on the face, and of course you can go advanced and really chisel your... everything you wanted. So, arms, chest, stomach, ass. 
collapsed in your thighs legs. And all of this. You have eyebrow scale, cheek dip, cheeks, chins, ear, eyes. <laughs> you can chisel your character to look as you want it. If you have the time and patience, which I might not. Anyway, I guess I'll show you that. Let's, let's go to the faces there, just in case. Uh, bold. Just in case you're wondering what the pre-made faces look like. There you go. And then switch to female. Show you that as well. Um, yeah, sure, not gonna be that one. Or that one. <laughs> Maybe that one. Yep, it's gonna be one. <laughs> Size. Um, I think the body markings also different based on culture. We have faces. Okay, could you not? Thank you. That's pretty nice. Pretty sure everybody's using that one. <laughs> well, or that one, honey. And that's that. That's the customization option. I've seen better, I've seen a lot worse. And I'm happy because, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know what? I think I'll end the video here and if anyone's interested, let me know what class you think is gonna be really fun. I'm kinda oscillating between Dark Templar and Conqueror. Dark Templar is kinda winning because I already have a Conqueror. And maybe Barbarian or a Zerald of... Sorry, Herald of Zotic. So, if you have any idea, if you have experience, let me know. Dark Templar, Conqueror, Barbarian, so they can't really tank, so they're at the bottom. Or maybe a Herald of Zoti, because it's really wild and freakish. And, you know, sure, vote on a culture. A colonial, although, mm, not gonna really matter, because I can't be a Stygian Conqueror, can I? <laughs> or an Aquilonian Herald of Zoti. Of that guy. So, hope you enjoyed the set, hope you are uh, interested in the game, and I'll see you next time. Probably gonna be a female. Although, real armor, as opposed to boob armor. We'll see. Thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoy the set. See you next time when we actually have a character made and decided. Have a good day, Nori. Sorry. Do not forget to vote if you're interested and give your opinion. Dark Templar or Conqueror or Barbarian or Zerald of Zodiac. I do believe they lost a, a, a chance to show you armors like uh, or different clothes like most games do when you change a class because of the way you start. You start as a slave and that's it. Of course you're not going to have your arm or clothes as a slave. That's ah, actually pretty nice customization. Huh. Anyway, goodbye.